Up next, a look at Super Cats from the op. Super Cats was designed by a ridiculously big number of big name game designers. Uh, these names include Antoine Bauza, Corentin Lebrat, Ludovic Montblanc, Nicholas Ori, and Theo Riviere. It features artwork from Xavier Gwenefi Durin. Now, here in North America, it was published by The Op. Super Cats plays three to six players, and a game takes uh, well under 15 minutes. No prototype this week. That means the best way to see what you get with a shiny new copy of Super Cats is to watch our unboxing video that went live Monday on YouTube. Now, I do have to admit, there's not a lot to see in this one. Uh, it's cards and cards and four cards. It's just a bunch of cards. Cards with cats and cards that make up a giant robo dog. And then a couple reference cards. Now, I will say, the cats are pretty damn cute. And their superhero versions are pretty cool. So the art, I definitely give a thumbs up. And you can even see some of the art of, of some of the cat decks and watch Mo fully assemble the super dog thing live <laughs> in the unboxing. Uh, as well, uh, I flash up some uh, Samurai Pizza Cats so you know what the heck we're talking about. Yes. So what does one do with all these cards and cats and robo dog parts on them? All right. So there's a dead simple game. It's played in two episodes. Episode one is Transformation. Here, each player forms a team of five regular cats and battles to be the first to transform their cats into super cats and become the hero of episode two. Players each select five cat cards. Uh, these are placed face up in front of you, cat side up. Uh, each round, you're simultaneously going to go super cats and hold out one hand showing zero to five fingers. Now, the player who's holding up the highest unique number wins the round and will flip over some of their cats. What they get to flip is based on the number and that is also indicated on the reference cards in case you forget this. Now, really quickly, zero flips two. One flips one of their cards, cats, but then gets to use two hands next turn. The next ones are two and three, which are both flip one cat. And then there's four, which you get to flip one of your cats and one of your opponents. And five, which lets you flip only one cat, but then next round, you've got to hold out a two. First player to flip all their cats wins episode one. Pretty simple. Five normal cats combined to form. No, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the expansion. The, the Super go. Cats Voltron Combiners expansion. I, I could totally see that. There's got to be an expansion. Come on, Anton Bowser. What are you doing? You're going to make like hard co-op games. So you could be doing the Super Cats combo. All right. Once you're done, episode two, you go, or sorry, episode one, you go into fight. Here, the players use their super pure powered cat team. A uh, hero player, the one that won the first round, is going to face off against Robo Dog, which is played by the other players. The winner from round one keeps their five superpowered cats in front of them. Everyone else can get rid of their cat teams from play because now it's time for them to play the Robo Dog. Now, Robo Dog is assembled by placing 12 cards out on the table uh, in a certain pattern that makes this horrible looking four legged, four armed Robo Dog thing. From here on in, it's the hero player versus everyone else. Similar to the first round, everyone Simon says as he goes, Robo Dog, and then holds up a hand, showing zero to five fingers. If any Robo Dog players match the hero's number, the hero then has to flip over a number of cats equal to the number of players they match with, over to their non superhero side. At any point, the hero has only normal cats left, they lost. Robo Dog takes the day. If the hero planage player manages to throw a unique number, they do damage to Robo Dog equal to that number. Now, remember, RoboDog's made up of 12 cards. Well, each card's one health. You just remove a number of cards equal to the match. Now, there's also special rules for the Super Meow. This is if the hero manages to throw a fist, which is zero, and not get matched, they then can swap all of their basic cats back to the superhero side. Episode 2 continues until the hero's defeated or the RoboDog's defeated, with victory going to the opposite side. Now, along with this, there are some special rules for playing with free five or six players. Uh, it involves sometimes having to have two hands out or adding special gold or silver cats that do a whole tuxedo mask thing where they soak some damage and then disappear. Uh, that is pretty much it. So Rochambeau, the card game. Yeah, exactly. Because I got to say, this one is it's something else. Um, when I first got this, I was surprised. So I had gotten a hold of the op and asked uh, to review it. And this wasn't one I asked to review. This is something the op just tossed in my shipment along with Batman Talisman, Vis Villain, Batman Talisman Super Villains Edition and Telestrations 
Thrawn. Both of those will be talking about later in the show. And then I'm like, what what the heck is this box with the super cats? And to be honest, the back of the box didn't say much on it. So then I recorded an unboxing video, right? And again, I'm confused because I don't think I've ever seen a hobby card game where the cards have nothing on them but art. Like there's nothing. There's no numbers. There's no suits. There's no bonuses. There's no text. And then I was even more confused because this like dead simple game was by some of the biggest names in board gaming. Like seriously, like I mean, we go through the list again just to give you some of the other games they make. So Antoine Bauza, he's the designer of Takanoko Seven Wonders and Hanabi. Corentin Labrat did Draftosaurus, Once Upon a Castle and Ninja Academy. Ludovic Montblanc did Cyclades, Mr. Jack and Cash and Guns. At least Cash and Guns kind of fits the theme here. Nicholas Ori did Mercurios, and Theo Rivera did Nagaraja, Sea of Clouds, and Shinobi Wata. Like these are not like th these are top thousand games, probably even higher up there. I I'd have to look up Seven Wonders has got to be top hundred on Board Game Geek. Like these are not unknowns, right? And I don't get it, but what I picture, and I don't know if this is true, but this is my theory, is they're at Essen, probably, Essenspiel, because these are mostly European game designers. And it's like late at night at Essenspiel, and they're at a bar, and they're having some beers, and they're like, what game can we improve on? And someone's like, I bet you can't come up with a better version of Rock, Paper, Scissors. And then these people sitting around drinking are like, all right, let's do it. And they, Super Cats was the answer. That, that's my theory on where this game came from. Well, apparently... Uh, it was announced as late as September 2017 as part of the Yellow Mini Games line. And the, the group of designers... That's not even the same publisher, then. The group of designers are known as the Tokyo Boys because oh. of their fondness for visiting Japan and hitting up the Tokyo game market. Okay, so it's still at a con, but it was at the Tokyo game market. And I gotta say, Tokyo Boys still sounds like a drinking group. I don't know if they were drinking, but I, I playing this game, I think they were drinking. Apparently, the original name for it was Sentai Cats, not not surprisingly. That makes sense, Sentai yeah. Cats. Actually, it fits the Sentai, because you got the five heroes. That's the whole Super Sentai. Yep. There's a whole yep. thing. That fits, actually, even better. Anyway, gameplay. Uh, I already told you how to play. Like, that was it. it. It's a simple card game. You can play a full game in under 15 minutes. This is the very definition of a quick filler game. Now, this is both what's great about Super Cats and what's wrong with it all at once. If you need a quick game that you can teach anyone in under five minutes and finish the full game in under 15, this can be a fun choice. This can be a great way to get people in the gaming mood. Like personally, I think that's the niche this game fills is the very start of the night. You got people who are kind of milling about. They're not sure what to do. You get them all to sit down at the table together and play something silly to, to loosen up and, and start the, the, the social interaction. It could also be something good when you're waiting for another game to finish. Like if you're at a, a big gaming event where there's multiple tables and you finish early, maybe Super Cats is something you can grab to play while the other game finishes up. Yep. No, absolutely. That's uh, I mean, there's, there is definitely a place in the world for games that play that fast. Yeah. Now what I can't see is anyone doing playing a Super Cats game night, right? I'm never going to be like, Sean and Corey and Kat, come over. Let's play some Super Cats. It's not going to happen. Not not for me, at least. Like, there are some filler games out there. You might want to do that. Like, you'll have them over and, like, we're going to play this 10 times or 20 times. Like, I have spent many hours playing Concept or playing um, Code Names in a row. I just can't see it for this one. It's just not something I would want to do with Super Cats. And I got to say, my cat kids even felt the same way. Because after about two rounds, they're kind of done and ready to move on to something less silly. Now, at this point, my kids are 10 and 12. And I do think, like, I wonder, I can't test this because I can't time travel, if they might have liked it a lot better if they were much younger. Well, I think especially because your kids in particular have already been delving deeper into the the hobby gaming world. Yeah. Um a light filler to the game to them is still a light filler game. Whereas for a more general audience, um, you know, the light filler is enough and the fun, the fun graphics. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, the yeah. art on these cards is great. And, and that combined with just some fun family, you know, fist throwing is enough to, to make it a good game. Uh, whereas, you know, they're already getting into the more uh, quad heroes level yes. of, of games that, yep. um, no, totally that, that aren't the, the filler. I got to say, though, I'm, with this game, like this is a game about super powered cats and this couldn't keep my kids attention for more than two rounds. If like, they were more than happy to play it two times and then, you know what, a few days later, they're willing to play it again. But 
I really don't think this one's going to keep any adult engaged for much longer. Like, I, I'd be ha surprised if you got two rounds out of most people. Unless they didn't quite get it the first round. Unless you had that, oh, now I get it, let's play again. I don't think you need a lot of it. Like, this is a fun activity. It, it's cute. They're, you're going to have some laughs. And again, I think it's great as a startup, a warm-up game to get people talking and engaged. But it, to me, it's not much more than that. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely one of those things where, hey, we got to kill some time here. Hey, you know, I got this in my back pocket because again, yeah. it's a small little, you know, single single deck basically uh, of cards. Um, that's great that way. But no, it, it's not. Yeah. It's not a hobby game uh, for one no. thing. It's 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 uh, it's fun life hill. And, and it's one of those games too. I could see with um, at the start of the night, right? Like more people are showing up. The like game night starts at five. We're going to wait till 530 before we start playing to give time for people to show up. But you three who are here right now, let's play some super cats, right? Yeah. It's that kind of game. Like I, I guess if you are looking for, for a new dead, simple, a uh, portable, there is that bonus. Like really you could take this out of the box and it's a deck of cards, 52 cards. You're done. Actually, I think it's 54, but whatever. It, it's a filler game. It's got an amusing theme. Like check it out. Like if that's something you're looking for, if that's a niche you need to fill. The thing is there are lots of other games that fit that same niche. And while Super Cats is a fun diversion, it's just not that strong enough a game for me to recommend everyone rush out and pick this one up. If you don't have a filler that fits that spot, this could easily be one of them. But if you've already got a few other games that fill this niche, I don't think Super Cats is going to really add a lot to your game night. Yeah, and I mean, it's not an expensive game. It's 10 bucks on Amazon, um, which is is fine. But you're also not getting a lot for 10 bucks. Uh, but again, it is art. And, uh, you know, the, we've talked about it, you know, if you like the Samurai Pizza Cats, there's a little bit yep. of, uh, you know, memory connection there. There's that that fun sort of feeling of the same thing. So your mileage may vary, but uh, I, I think it would actually probably make a fun uh, gift to give, um, you know, because, again, it might not be something you're going to buy for yourself, yeah. but it could be something, uh, you know, fun that someone wouldn't buy for themselves that you could grab them for uh, for a Christmas gift. I, I will admit my mother-in-law really enjoyed it. She thought it was a lot of fun. So I, there is definitely a market out there that's going to enjoy this game. Absolutely. All right, well, for a more in-depth look at Supercats, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.